you know, that kind of thing, or Tony Danza, like, and I'd find things that were observational comedy with them. Tony Danza, the bit was, um, he would talk normally, pretty much, until somebody from the old neighborhood came around, right? So it was like, on Who's the Boss? Johnny did Samantha Mona. And then Mrs. Rosini, like his acting chops were like just to go 100 percent to the old school, uh, the old big character. And it was just to me, that was the funny observation in it. And it was an offbeat impression. People were only doing Jack Nicholson at the time. Nobody was really Everybody doing. Was doing Jack yeah. Nicholson. Like now it's Christopher Walken like that. But right. Christopher Jack Walken. Nicholson was the one everybody was doing. And they were doing these big over the top Jack Nicholson's. And I would do just a silent, a quiet one. You know, that the more real guy and people like, well, that's a different version. And even people who hated impressions were like, you're actually kind of doing something a little bit different. So comics like me because I developed an act like most comics would see an impressionist and go, this guy sucks. You mean you look at YouTube now and like people do way better impressions than me. I see people like doing these incredible impressions, but they don't create a character with it that much. And you go, after they do the line, you're kind of going, eh, okay, now what? What? what how did, where does this go? And even with um, you know, the old school stuff I do, like John Madden, I got bored with doing the, you know, the John Madden. I turned him into a character that's going, <laughs> and make these big noises. And it became just its own character as opposed to just the impression. And to me, that became more fun. And there were people who could do dead-on impressions better than me. But I would find the physicality and stuff like that to go with it. And what I'm trying to do now in my act and life and everything is doing that with characters. You, 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 you just put a voice to something that happens in your life. And that's almost like you, an impression is just a character that everybody knows already. A character you have to set up more and give people the background because they don't know what the point of view is on the character. I had, I, I had an uncle, Uncle Phil that was i mean i think he i think you and him would have been great friends but he had this whole thing about like he hey frank you should spend time with sinatra i'm like really can't tell you but here's a story like you can't you just told me you can't tell me a story like at one point he was the cheese king of chicago he's like you can't frank and he get mad about it. i don't even understand it yeah they get like, pissed get, about like, the but cheese. you frankie you can't get cheese in chicago without going through me i'm like what what's ha who's trying to get the cheese what are you worried about like, what's are there other cheese gurus out there? So I was like, that kind of stuff, and turn those guys into characters, and and make that part of my act, and be part of what I'm trying to become and tell the stories. But it's truth again. It comes back to that truth stuff. That who am I, and what's my background? And I tell stories about that stuff, and people go go crazy. You can you can look him up because he was gone for a while, but he. I don't even know if I should be saying this, but he quit witness protection. I've never seen anybody do that. But he, all of a sudden, went, you know, we had Italian Christmas, you know, on the phone. There, hey, it's Uncle Phil. Hey, Fringy, how you doing? You know, where are you? Can't say. And then one year, he just showed up again. And we're like, what? How's he here? Yeah, Italians can't. They Bl all, they all get out. Block the windows. Shut the, shut the everything. All leave Everybody the duck. We're gonna have a low Christmas. When did you think about LA? When did you start thinking about L.A.? Did somebody reach out to you? Uh, yeah, uh, a manager did. And he said, I don't want to use names. Uh, you probably know him. But he's like, you got to come out here, man. It'll be incredible. So I get, I couldn't even get on Make Me Laugh. I couldn't get on the show Make Me Laugh. That's when I first came to L.A. Make Me Laugh was with the kid that. No, no. Make Me Laugh was all comedians would go on. And just tell jokes to a person sitting there. Right. On yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. Yeah, and the yeah. people that Who was did, the host? Uh, He's in Vegas now doing the revival or something. He's playing it? somebody. Because what happened to him? He taped a thousand of those fucking episodes. Yeah. I don't even remember who Make it was. Make me laugh. Little Jewish kid. Yeah. I don't He was I, a host. I'm nice not, kid. Real nice. Would be at the improv every night. But the people who did really great weren't jokes. Because some people go on and tell jokes. And some people would go on and just say goofy things and do goofy stuff. Right, you weren't stuff. Gonna, if you weren't and, then did stand up, yeah, because like mind. The, the whole part of a joke is the people kind of have to know when the joke is coming so they know when to laugh. Mark Cohen, Bobby Van, no. that's, that's what Mark Cohen sounds right. Mark oh, that's Cohen. old. Sorry, hold on. Yeah, yeah. Mark Cohen. So, um, so the the people who is what's his name? Who's I find him incredibly hilarious. Todd uh, Glass. Yeah, Todd Glass. Todd Glass would do well. Todd that. Glass was a guy who would just kill on there. Look at me. He would yell at <laughs> no, I remember exactly. that. Exactly. Yes. It was exactly, and that, that was yes. the stuff 
that really made you like because you don't know what's coming. A point of a joke is you might not know what the joke is, but you know when it's coming. It's an assumption that's set up. And then you zig when you think you're going to zag. And that's where the funny part comes from. They Like you get caught off guard and people put two and two together in their heads and they go, I got it. So that I couldn't even get on that show. And everybody was on that show. Make me laugh. I didn't, I didn't get on it. They hated me. Almost too. everybody was on that everybody show. Everybody was on everybody that minus show. Everybody minus two. X minus everybody. two was on that show. Now, what was your first show that you got on? It? Uh, I think they got me. He got me on uh, Craig Kilborn. Okay, I think I did Craig Kilborn. What improv show did you go on? I never did an improv show. Well, what what show? Before Mad TV, you were on something. Hype on the WB. Hype, okay. Hype was, I got that. A sketch show, improv. Right. I'm sorry, I got that, I and that was in the Chicken deal. Chicken, who went to um, Montreal, he got a huge one of the, like you talked about earlier in the episode, the 500. He was the last right, of the giant the deals. the last of the giant Because they kind of figured out that they were getting played by the agents and managers in Montreal. For the people who don't know, the Montreal Comedy Festival before the internet was where people got discovered, a lot of comedians. So you go on and you do these new faces. And I remember going on, like doing my, I was doing a gala set, which was one of those bigger shows. And Chelsea Handler was going to do the new faces. And I, I was just, I was basically just mocking her the whole time because she was so into herself. I'm like, just like, what's, where's this girl? Where's this woman ever going to end up? And now she's huge, right? But it was one of those kinds of things like going, wow, she's really determined to sell herself and be important. I'm like, I'm the total opposite. I'm kind of just a joke, just who got lucky and got here. But uh, those new faces, he got a $500 deal by humping a stool. Right, five hundred. dollars He went $500,000. And Mitch Hedberg, the year before, had gotten a huge deal, too. Right. And so there was this... <coughs> There was this whole thing of people getting these five hundred thousand dollars. When deals. Mitch Hedberg got the deal, when they came, this is how different the town was. When they came back, they closed the Improv on Monday and Tuesday night. Monday was a showcase for writers, and Tuesday was a showcase for showrunners. Hmm. That's how different the industry was. They yeah. don't even do showcases in this town no more. Oh, they don't. They used I don't to even do know. The CAA showcase, APA used to do a big showcase. Uh, but do you need it anymore? You can just see everybody. Yeah, nobody's gonna come. That's, nobody's gonna you, come. You can just that's like, how fucking different the internet changed. just changed all that. So, so the chicken deal. What happened was he was really he had a great presence, but he was just humping a stool, and they made it so nobody could get into there. That was brilliant, brilliantly done by agents and managers. Right, it was it was all where done. nobody could get everybody. in, and all the networks were bidding on this guy that nobody knew and didn't even know what he did because they weren't. There was no internet, so you couldn't research what he was doing. People were just like, somebody wants him? We got to have him. And then they had a deal. Warner Brothers gave him a deal and didn't know what show to put him in, so they merged him with my deal and my show, and it became the show called Hype. And it wasn't right for him at all, but he got on Triple X. He was in that, and he had some he had some real heat. But we had a show that was a weird thing. Our showrunners were going for massages during the day when they should have been showrunning. It was just kind of a mess. There were some very talented people. It was just, it wanted to be a pop culture cheesy show because it was WB. And it should have been a gritty, more real, which was what was going to, they didn't see the future. Like the Chappelle and everybody going in and having filmed pieces that weren't jokey jokes. They were more situational stuff. And we're doing these big jokey line stuff to the camera. It was like hee haw or something like that. If people remember that, you just tell a joke, and as you know, like you were talking about earlier with your act, one liners. Eh, you might have a great one liner, but people are gonna they they might not even remember the one liner. Your personality, they'll go. Well, he's the guy who uh, sells the espresso machines without ever buying them. We're going in like fucking Marines. You understand me? Welcome to church, motherfucker.